shall not be moved. We shall not, we shall not be moved until the staff are reinstated in their jobs. We shall not be moved. We shall not, we shall not be moved. We shall not, we shall not be moved. We will defend the tent until the end of time. We shall not be moved. Whose library? Our library. Whose libraries? Our libraries. Whose libraries? Our libraries. Our libraries. We are defending the ten not just one library. And when we occupied, we occupied to defend all our libraries and the librarians in them. It's a service, not a building. This occupation alongside our strikes last year to try and save our libraries, and I do think that we do still have a chance to save our libraries, is one of the most incredibly proud moments of my life. When we came out after 10 days, 2,000 people met us outside here, if you remember, and we marched through Brixton, and I think maybe the council saw then what they were up against. We're here today to stick a marker down to say, no, we've not gone away, and the fight goes on. We have a bit of a theme today, because it's April Fool's Day. We've got Jokers being the council, we've got Alice in Wonderland, and we've got the Mad March Hare. And other such themes. Even after the occupation, we were here. We were on the steps. We were playing chess. We were having all the activities that we could manage to have. And we're going to continue to have them until we're back where we belong inside. I am the Master of Rebels. And I'm here to say, Land of Council think that we'll give up and go away. But we're no April Fools. We are here to stay. <laughs> It's the sheer stupidity of their plans, which I think we should mark on April Fool's Day. The plan to close libraries and install gyms, gyms in them never made sense in the first place. It didn't make the savings they said they needed to make. It was going to cost them four million quid extra building these blasted gyms. We are 12 minutes from the Lido gym. We are 10 minutes from the gym over there for the posh people at Jags. We are three minutes from the boxing gym for the not posh people down the road. We are 15 minutes from the Flaxman gym. There is no reason for another gym here. Closing this library would not st stop them having to pay the rates and the utility costs and indeed the staff are still on the payroll somewhere. Just on top of that, they've got security costs. So it's costing them more to keep this library closed than it would have done to keep it open. From the very first, there was an alternative scheme by the library managers, who are geniuses at making bricks without straw, which would have kept all of Lambeth's 10 libraries going, made all the savings they were demanding, um, would have improved the service even on that miserable budget, they didn't even look at it for months. They were threatened with legal action if they didn't look at the plan. Their own plan is absolutely nowhere. This library has been pointlessly closed for a year, wasting money, and God knows how many more months they're going to keep it closed, fooling about. A lot of what's being talked about by Lambeth around what they're going to do with the libraries is around community volunteer groups. Now, I'm all for volunteers, and we're all for community groups, but libraries also need librarians. They are the front line in health and well-being. It's time to play disabled people off against libraries by saying that it's got no choice. It's either close adult, so, adult social care services or close libraries. I need to make it clear, I work in adult social care in the council and I work a lot of my time in our libraries. Our libraries are adult social care services. They are our frontline adult social care services. They're the one place that older people can go, which is still free, which is still warm, which is still safe. It's the one place that disabled people can go, as we can't afford internet access, that welcomes us, that's inclusive and inviting. When people first become visually impaired, the biggest barrier we face is that we can't access information. And Lambeth Libraries is the place that opens their doors and allows us to go in, is it accessible and gives us the opportunity, gives me the opportunity to teach people the skills they need to rebuild their lives. People who are profoundly deaf, whose communication method is British Sign Language. 
have a huge problem with communication barriers in terms of getting information about their access to benefits, changes to PIP, changes to DLA, uh, and, and all the rest of it. Who opens their doors to, this, uh, to, to, to the deaf community? Lambeth Libraries opens its doors to the deaf communities. In 1964, my parents arrived down this road with seven children, and my mother was working at the bottom of the road down there in a factory. And she used to take my brothers and sisters and leave them here when she was actually working. You walk in here, you get a book, you don't pay for it. And the whole point of libraries is to open their doors, to open their arms, and to allow society not just to be something that takes stuff from people and that people resent, but something that actually shows the love of society for the people in it just like the NHS. Lambeth is actually, they are Philistines. How could you close such a beautiful building that has done such wonderful things for the community? This is ideologically driven. This is the same ideology that in the 1990s, they decided that our primary schools were failing because they were failing to be luxury flats. And so what they did, they sold them all to developers and now we haven't got enough primary school places in the borough. It's ideologically driven, it's a group called Progress which was started in the 90s to take over the Labour Party and drive it to the right and have Blair as Prime Minister and it's an insane ideology that you can just bring the private sector in and they make everything better and we know that they don't. What works is the public sector in things like this. Only the public sector can do this. This is the grassroots problem of the Labour Party. The rottenness that's been in the Labour Party at the grassroots for decades. I would be very ashamed to be a part of the Labour group as it stands at the moment with its vast majority, with its arrogance, with its certainty that it, nothing will happen but that it will be re-elected on a resounding victory on the 3rd of May next year. And I think that this for me symbolizes all that is wrong about a council that pays no regard whatsoever to the electorate which it purports to represent. I was suspended for six months for speaking out. I was told I could be readmitted to the Labour group if I'd like, not. At any point, if I showed contrition, if I retracted everything I've said in public and said that actually I had always believed the opposite but I was mistaken <laughs> and if I made a public apology to everyone whose names I had tarnished in criticising the council's policy. I was also suspended because I failed to defend the council's policy. Of course I said no. At the end of the six months when I'd served my time, I was offered the same options all over again. And of course, again, I declined to do that. I am, by the skin of my teeth, still a councillor. <laughs> the least we can do, I think, is show symbolically that we're the people who are protecting the library and the library service and hold hands around the library, make a symbolic barrier to the council and their friends, their dodgy friends, GLL. Who's library? Our library! 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 Who's library? Our library!